Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Ah, uh, it's my first stream in a little while and I've shocked myself by being exactly on time. So this is very exciting for me. If you're you're watching out there, hello. We're gonna be playing some Purple Satin Day today. Thought that might be fun as a as a one-off stream. So let's uh, let's fade down the, uh, the background music. This is the music from the game. Um, possibly the only music track in the game. We'll, we'll find out. Let me fade that down for us. There we go. Lovely. So that was some of um, I forgot his name. Stefan Peaks. Some of Stefan Peaks' composition for the Amiga version of. Purple Satin Day. So this is this is one of the set of covers. So I think this is probably the European edition, by the looks of it, as it's uh, dual language English and French on the the back of the box there. Um, and it's a it's kind of a um, compilation of mini games, um, four mini games. Um, but the uh, the greatest thing about it really is that it's wrapped up in a theme um, so this is an exos game so let's wind back a little bit so uh, in france in the um i said throughout the 80s i think um air informatique or ere informatique i'm not quite sure how uh, that should be pronounced um were producing games and then in the late 80s it kind of uh created a sub label uh, with the intention of producing um, sci-fi uh, themed games uh, called Exos, uh, which uh, was sort of a core of uh, a small core of um, I'd say some probably some more uh, avant-garde game developers from the kind of the, the scene at the time. Um, I, from my impression, they were very much geared towards uh, development for the Amiga. Um, the Amiga was um, pretty popular in Europe at the time and uh, and yeah had a pretty vibrant demo scene from what I understand um, and it had had a good uh, more so than many of its uh, competitors at the time for the, the home computer market it um, had quite a good capacity for, for graphics um, and for sound so there were lots of people experimenting with the, um, the tracker um, sound composition that you could do um, and using the um, the uh, palette swapping abilities, so that you could uh, you'd have a broader range of, of colors available to you overall within your game. Um, yeah, and I think uh, they uh, it led in one in one branch anyway to Exos, um, who kind of under that under that label developed uh, three games. So Captain Blood was kind of uh, the first, the very first game to come under that label, um, which was, um, I'd say, a rather experimental, um, kind of like a space opera game, um, which we're going to have to play on this channel at some time because it, it looks incredible um, and it's pretty bonkers. Um, so that was 1988, um, which is the same year that Purple Saturn Day was released. Um, so I guess it's kind of a, a slighter follow-up. Um, but it was kind of more of a further, further proof of concept. I think that the um, the team could make different kinds of games while maintaining this kind of um, sort of mytho-religious uh, science fiction. Um, I mean, it's quite comedic as well. This this sort of weirdness that they uh, they persisted in. Um, from what I've read, the uh, the team took a very avant-garde approach. And um, produce some of this as as performance art as well. So when they're holding press press conferences uh, um, and making announcements about the games as well as just what the content of the games themselves, um, they they fictionalised it. So they uh, pitched uh, Exos as a god um, and kind of held the um, the press conferences as ceremonies. Um, it sounds quite uh, quite bizarre and quite exciting. But I'll, we can get a bit more into that in a minute. I should be getting the, um, let me get the game slightly in the background so the music will come back too, but that will take a minute. So while I was while I was chattering away there, I could have got that going. But that gives you a little bit of a, uh, 
a background on purple satin day. Uh, the manual is, uh, I think, gives a good flavour of of what's going on here. Um, so I'll read you the uh, the opening page uh, while we're waiting for things to load up. So, <laughs> okay, first page says, "Welcome, athletes! Upon this great day of joy, celebration, and meaning." This glorious day of purple dawning, the launching of a new year on Saturn, the supreme gem of the sky. We native Saturnians bid you alien athletes who desire to participate in, and of course perhaps win the events, created on our great being Exos, for giving us this new day, new year, new victor. Welcome! The day's events will be held in whatever order the athletes want. The winners of each round of events will go on competing in a sort of ladder of winners, until there is one single victorious and gloriously delicious champion, who will be rewarded by our queen, the queen of Saturn, then and there. What follows is a rendition of the grand purple Saturn day ceremony speech, given with the benediction of Exos himself, in person, narrated by the purple Saturn day president, spelt with a Z, before the commencement of events. Oh, Exos, you are good for us. Oh, Exos, it is once more the new year on Saturn, the day of purple dawning, wonder of wonders, atar, atar. Gaze, great Exos, upon the humans from the blue planet, the bull from the Asterox constellation, the Golgos. Oh, I lost my place. Sorry. The g <laughs> there we go. The Golgos, for all the way from marvelous Clacos. Look, O Exos, upon the proud, cruelest warriors from ancient Masterchog, and the humble, homeless Shaxa refugees. Finally, smile fondly upon your friends, the Kumo from Corpo WW. All have come for you, O Exos, and for the pangalactic games we hold each and every Purple Saturn Day. This year, four superb competitions have been randomly selectorised by Exos himself. The Ring Pursuit, the Time Jump, the Tronic Slider, the Brain Bowler. These will be explained to you when you most need to know about them. Dear friends, competitors, loved ones, others, and all those, who all, all those of you who come to benefit by placing bets, let us, with one voice, heap thanks on Exos. And then there's stage directions, there's all chant. And it, uh, it, in all caps, Atta Atta Hoglo Hulu, Atta Atta Hoglo Hulu, Ham Tot Zoglo Hulu Hulu, Ham Tot Zoglo Hulu Hulu, Atta Atta Hoglo Hulu, Atta Atta Hoglo Hulu. Yeah, so that gives you an idea of, of uh, where we're coming to this from. So the uh, the manual itself kind of alternates between uh, some instructions, which are not always entirely helpful, um, with like little bits of uh, lore and like fictional adverts from the the world. So we'll, we'll play a little bit and read a little bit as we go along to give you a good flavour of this game. But in the meantime, let's switch to here. Yes, here we are. So you should be able to see this is the uh, the uh, title screen um, while the music plays. Lovely. Let's just see if anybody's popped into chat. Uh, just say hello. Yeah, hello, welcome. Um, you're very welcome to the stream. Let's see if we can play a little bit of, of this game, if possible. I haven't played any of the events before. Um, I've read, read through the menu once. Um, but I will be need to be referring back to it, I think, to uh, to try and uh, make sense of what's going on here. So this is kind of the menu screen. I think I need to press a button to get it to work. There we go. I think it just in practice it just means our music stops, um, and then it will slowly load in the uh, the options for us, I believe. There we go. Here we are. Um, as music and sound effects come and go, do let me know how it's sounding and looking for you. Um, I think, as far as I can tell from my end, sh it should be all right. But yeah, give me give me a heads up on that front. So, um, if you've ever seen Captain Blood, so Exos's previous game, uh, it uh, yeah it had an interesting. Um, I guess visually based um, interface really. There weren't. There's not a lot in the way of word, conventional words there, and that's part of what that game is doing. Uh, but that's also the case here. So 
uh, I'm gonna have to refer to the documentation, excuse me a moment, uh, to uh, see what these symbols are. So we have, uh, yeah, that should work. Okay, let me get my pointer back. There we go. So this one on the left, uh, the sort of Saturn image, is Ring Pursuit. Then next in, uh, we've got, is that Tronic Slider? I think that's Tronic Slider. And then this one, which kind of looks like a brain shape, that's the Brain Bowler. And then the one which is a circle of stars is the Time Jump. So, um, the so those we can click on those for practice mode. The the manual tells me, or what you can do is if you're ready to head into competition, you can click here, and you get to have a look at the other competitors from other planets. But I think we'll perhaps work through all the games first, and then uh, then have a go at that. So let's read one of these. Uh, one of these cheeky ads before we get going. Uh, what was the... yeah, so there's this one. So just off the Amiga loading instructions, um, there's just a little bit of text that says it's good for you. All your ideas gone? Has your brain turned to sticky garbage? It probably has. Chances are you've been smoking too many Trump tails. Maybe. Why not think of Exos? Exos is good for you. They're boxed out. Prayons discovered. Thanks to the new gigantoscope Luna 45, a new prayer particle known as a prayon has been detected in the universe. This discovery should guarantee that Luna Tox Incorporated will become Saturn's new leading prayer accessory manufacturer. The following radio prayer, as yet untreated by Exos prayer experts, was captured by Luna 45 and probably originates from the Cigar Galaxy. Preliminary studies indicate that a triple repetition of this prayer just before major competition will slow opponents down by a factor of 0.3. The radio prayer, as given, is Um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you uh, <laughs> uh, an idea of tone. Um, okay, so uh, from the podium, let's have a look. We're uh, no, no, not that bit, not that bit, not that bit. Okay, well, uh, ring pursuit. Okay, so let me tell you what ring pursuit is. Um, in the ring pursuit, you fly in Saturn's brightest ring called the B ring on Earth and the bathtub ring on Master Chog. This competition is a duel in which time doesn't count. To win, you must score higher points than your competitor. Space boys mark the route. So, uh, controls. I can use my mouse and just just move it around. Okay, move the pointer around, presumably. Um, what is cute is that it gives you. Um, there's a little table for each event, um, and it shows you what you can do um, for. Uh, each of the control inputs that you might have for, for whatever system you're using this on. This was uh, um, IBM PC and Amiga, I think. Um, it might Possibly it might have been ported to other things, but that's what this manual cover is. Um, so it lists what you can do with your mouse, your keyboard and your joystick. Uh, and what I find particularly charming is that uh, when it comes to the mouse, it describes moving the mouse as rolling, which um, is nice. Nice little bit of... Uh, uh, social and computing history there. Okay, so with this one, I just move the mouse forward, back, left, and right. Uh, what do I need to bear in mind? I score points when I'm in the lead, and when I pass the markers correctly. Yeah, and when I pass the markers correctly, I increase my s opponent's score by passing on the wrong side of the boys. Um, hang on, I need to look at this picture, don't I, to see what boys, what boys, what. Um, so one looks like a can on its side, I need to pass on the left. One that looks like a dial, I need to pass on the right, according to this picture. Fair enough. Um, I get no penalty for passing on the wrong side if I'm behind. That sounds tricky. Um, so this is important, this is box text. Rituals forbidden during the ring pursuit. So I'm not allowed to form... Hostile gestures. Hostile gestures, words, blue message, or any form of negative sentiment transfer. Mumbo jumbo antics of any kind. 
ready to chance based on prey on technology or the wearing of dark spectacles. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so hopefully you're appreciating alongside me the uh, the general beauty of uh, of this pixel art here. It's quite fantastic, isn't it? And the um, obviously the uh, the world building they've put into this is, is quite substantial as well. So let's see what happens when we click on this game. Ooh, snazzy. Look at this. So is that that's us? I think that's us. Okay, I'm still not getting any sound through, that's okay. And then I think it's I think this is covering some loading time by the looks of it. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Okay. Uh Okay. Oh, 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 wow. Okay, it's moving kind of in three dimensions. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, ah, okay. So if I push, f oh my goodness, this is very fast. If I push forward with my mouse, I go faster, accelerate, decelerate if I uh, pull back. And, uh, um, this is very tricky. Um, bump into asteroids and then so left and right kind of but I wasn't expecting this to be kind of being a um... oh my goodness this is very tricky but I love how it looks and how it performs it's kind of in yeah pseudo 3D isn't it um, oh my goodness well no guarantees I'm going to be any good at these things it's yeah it's kind of hard hard to see what's coming up and uh, uh, wow, there's a ton, ton of asteroids here. Am I? Am I? <laughs> I I mean, yeah, I don't. I... Okay, let's just cut a corner off, shall we? Um, I I don't know if mouse is the best way to control this. Because I can in theory do it with. Okay, I kind of think we do it with the keyboard, which might actually be better. I'll do it with the cursor keys. Um, I think I yeah, I think I've got a little bit more control this way, but but at the same time, this is very tricky. Um, how do I? Well, how does it end? I didn't read how it ends. Oh no. I like the um the soundscape of it. It's nice. Oh. Oh. Okay, it's making making some weird sounds as I go past the boys now, which I didn't think it was doing before. There's so many blooming asteroids. Okay. Me being perplexed and uh, confounded as to what's going on here. May maybe a theme. So do you reckon this would be better with this might be better with joystick, mightn't it, really? I think one one of those sounds might be you did it right and one of those might be you did it wrong. Um, I can't quite tell which is which and the speed thing's going. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to. Come on, here we are. Oh, uh, okay. Has I, mean, I, f I feel like I'm doing laps, which is cool. Um, I've no idea. I think there's, there's something in the instructions about being able to like, knock your um, opponent out of the way, but I can't say I've con been conscious of any other like uh, racecraft uh, visible, but um, it is hard to make out what's what, frankly. And it's in a tiny little window. <laughs> Oh my, 
Um, so it said there was no time limit. Do you need to get to a certain... I think you might need to get to a certain... Um, score? Did it say you need to get to a certain score? Whoa. Whoa! Oh! Here we go. So somebody won. Somebody got... 506,182. Well done, whoever that was. Okay, so now... Great. Okay. I, I, have, I have no idea whether I won or lost that. Brilliant. That's my kind of race. Um, I'll just check back in with the, um, the notes. Um, so how does it end? Time does count when you must score higher points than your competitor. But how, how does it end? Okay, um, uh, so the thing on the right was a relative position to Saturn, which is interesting, and off my left was my short range radar, my position was always in the centre, there was a number under that was the distance of the opponent's ship apparently. Um, okay, opponent's score was on the left, so they were the winners there, and my score was on the right, um, as it was. Interesting. Um, alright, I didn't quite understand that, but never mind, let's try the Tronic Slider. This is a grab game. To win, you must capture more energy fragments than your opponent as, a, as you pilot a slider about an orbiting squared ring. Squared ring, okay. Uh, to compete, fire at the energy ball that's flying around. A direct hit fragments the ball. The energy fragments are now yours to take. So fly your slider over them to pick them up. Don't forget that your opponent is also grabbing fragments. As soon as you pick up all the fragments, the energy ball reforms and you start again. Hmm, that seems hard to follow out of context. This is a timed event. You compete until the clock reaches 5. So similar layout by the looks of it at the screen. So opponent's score will be on the left, my score will be on the right. Um, there will be energy fragments collected on the right hand side of the window. Um, short range radar on the left, um, time bottom left, speed bottom right, light flashes when energy ball is fragmented. Um, so I can press, so I can move the mouse uh, or arrow keys for directions. I can fire with space bar or the left button. I can hold down the right button to roll right, hold down the right button. To, oh my goodness. So what should I do again? Capture more energy fragments. So do I? Okay. Well, let's just see what it looks like. Perhaps I'll understand from the uh, context. The diagram doesn't doesn't do a lot for me. Well, you know what? Before before that, let's read a uh, another bit of uh, another bit of text. Hats off to Hans Murlock. Hans Murlock is a human scientist born on Earth, circa AD nineteen fifty. He is currently in veget vegetized survival status in Switzerland. Visitors are welcome to discuss interesting topics with one of the several thousand Murloc clones at the Saturn Institute in NNNY City, Mars. A renowned intergalactic alternative medicine expert, H. Murloc, left an indelible mark on Space Conquest Phase 2, also known as the second great phase of interstellar conquest. Political shadow boxer, pizza playmate, crooner, inventor of note and notorious cocktail set Casanova, Hans Murloc is also uncle to General Robert Snarling Bob Murloc, better known as Blood. First husband to talk of blood. The Murloc family chromosomes were classified golden genes of the universe in 2002, terrestrial dating, by Commandant Lung, also at present in a vegetized state of ongoing survival in Switzerland. Now that uh, is possibly a joke, or some things ring a little bell with what I know of Captain Blood, and the name Blood was in there, so that might be a little uh, integration of the two the two worlds there. So that, that was what that was. Let's give this a go. So I think it's going to be a similar... Ooh, love that graphic. Similar kind of control scheme, but with some added added extras. Some rolling and things, and firing. Oh, here we go. 
Oh, okay, so it's showing me, me a human with some kind of mohawk. And, okay. Um, Alright, so we're going to control it with the... Oh. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay, this isn't quite right, is it? Uh... Right, so I I don't quite know how to. Oh, hello. That did it. <laughs> uh, right, something's happened. So let's go. So are, there, are, there, are those crystals what I'm looking for? So, so I seem to be on this square thing that we saw in the uh, loading screen, and I'm trying to pick up. Things. I don't I don't know what I'm shooting at, or I mean it looks beautiful. Again, I like the soundscape, but oh, hang on, those are energy balls, right? So I just pick up energy balls. Don't know why I shoot at anything. So on, so forth. Uh, spin around, spin around, spin around. Okay. Uh, don't know where my opponent is. Just haven't seen anyone. Oh, that could have been someone. Uh, this is. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, I just can't see anything. I mean, there's something over here, vaguely. Was that a thing? Did I pick up a thing? Oh, oh, that was my opponent. Right, cool. Uh... Oh, they're gone. Uh, this is this is a uh, a devil to control, I'd say. Wow. Oh, crikey. Um. Oh. I don't appreciate the. Uh... Oh, hang on, that's lots of energy. Okay, I think I picked up a second energy ball, so that's that's something. Something to write home about, isn't it? Um. Oh, hello, ding dong, ding dong, ting ting tong. Hello, thank you for your frog. Ah. Oh no. I'm I'm playing this game and I don't I don't really know what's happening. Um, I think I'm trying to collect energy balls, and uh, and they're hard to see. This is hard to navigate. I s theoretically, I can shoot things with my spacebar, but I uh... okay. I th well, I tried to tried to take out my. Uh... No, what's happening? What? What is occurring? Oh, hi, nice to see you. Thank you, thank you for your, your comments. And thanks for um, following me on Twitch. It's lovely to see you. Uh. Well, uh, uh, yeah, so, the <laughs> so the, what, uh, whatever I'm currently doing, which is mainly bumping into crystals by the looks of it, is going to last until the timer gets to five, and then I might be released from this, uh, this perdition. Um, and then we'll have a look at some more of this game. Because I don't, I don't really seem to be gelling with this, uh, this part of it. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm trying to at the moment. I'm trying to uh, combine keyboard and mouse controls in a kind of unintuitive way and collect energy balls. And uh, not really sure it's working. What 
all. Hey, so far. Thank goodness for that. So I got 280,000 and they got... 220... No. Yeah, two, yeah. That was, they got 225,000. Okay. I think they might have won that round. Wow, that was... That was quite painful, actually. So... <laughs> okay. I need to... Uh, to calm, calm my nerves after that. Let's have a look at another advert from the manual before we tackle another one of these mini games. So we've got a practical recipe. The great sporting encounters that make up Purple Saturn Day leave our bodies and minds so drained, don't they? Well, why not try the following re easy recipes from Dr. Hans Murlock's acclaimed blockbusting be bestseller, My Alternative Medical Inside Secrets from Across the Ages. Published in the hard-hitting series, I Can Feel Exos Doing Me Good. The Pain Transmuter. This fun recipe is guaranteed to solve all your stomach scale pruritus problems. Millions of fighter pilots have known this itchy horror caused by laser fire drivel. Here's what you do. Grab a big juicy putrex vomicus quince, preferably from a Terpo 17 recycling pharmacy. Place it gently in your closet. After a few days, the quince will be covered with writhing yucks. They love fruit. Put one of the yucks in a little metal box with lots of air holes so that breathing remains a viable primary life support option. After all, even, even writhing yucks hate not being alive anymore. As soon as your scales start itching like crazy, remove the yuck from his box and slip the wriggly fellow in between two flamed scales. You'll be delighted with the results. Uh, right. Okay, well there's some advice for life. All right, so let's, we've done Ring Pursuit, we've done Tronic Slider. Tronic Slider was qu quite painful. Um, oh, I should have mentioned this. So there was a ritual forbidden during the Tronic Slider. The Master Choc version of the cruelest reproduction dance, judged to be long and tasteless, has been experimentally banned. Appeals may be lodged with the GPSDC. Okay. Um, Okay, let's, next one up in the sequence is Brain Bowler. Uh, mastering Mental Waves. Brain Bowler is a revolutionary cutting-edge technology way to control someone's mind. You and your competitor face a brain wall. The two sides of your two sides of the brain are the, your territories. Yours on the right and his on the left. Okay, we're on the right. Hurl your electro ball to strike your targets and guide the electrical charges towards your pins. Ah, oh, great! Yeah, point and click adventures. They are they're awesome. I intend to play some more of them for uh, streams or videos, um, if I can in the future. This is kind of <laughs> not that, although um, Exos and then later Cryo kind of kind of did do point and click adventures. So um, I yeah, we can kind of slide the theme in that direction at some point. Um, yeah, point and click adventures, lots of fun to be had there. So I need to steal energy from condensers, deactivate chips, open and close switches to block the opponent's progress and other dastardly needs. I think you mean deeds. Of course you can and should do the same to him. Oh, that's what he said. Okay, yeah. um, so I can use the arrow keys and space bar or the mouse and the left button. So this, I believe, is the game that was the basis for the later cryo game, Extas, which I have played and have made videos on. Uh, so hopefully this will be a bit more intuitive. Uh, let's see. I wonder if it's got some of the same interesting sound effects as well. That'd be cool. Oh, I like this. I like this loading screen. So it's kind of like in this weird clamshell thing in space. And I'm in my little control pod. Oh yeah, it does look quite similar, but it's quite tiny. Okay. Um, oh, I think I need the mouse for this one, don't I? Uh, oh, this is a lot harder to decipher than um, the next ass was. Oh, holy heck. Um, I'm not even really sure what I'm looking at. So energy sort of getting stuck in that thing. Can I... D oh. No, it's not. So it's not. Oh, 
great sounds, great sound work. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. This usually, well, in Xstat anyway, you can sort of pick up a component and move it around. But I seem to shoot off, oh, okay. Shoot off my energy ball into a particular location and it does whatever it's gonna do from there. Yeah, great, great sound work, but um, I'm terribly confused. Oh, okay, so if I shoot an energy ball at one of, like, one of these switches, that seems to do something to them. Um, ah, nice, these are the um, kind of central point that we need to get energy to in the middle is actually the uh, same design as Exos, the god from the, the fiction of this universe, which I like. Um, okay, so can I shoot an energy thing at, so this is like a sticking point, does that, can I, what if I click at these things, does that, no, okay, I'm going to let that bubble around in the background while I click at the manual again, because I think I'm going to need a bit more help. So hit a switch to open or close it, which I think I'd worked out. So they're sort of the um, the two bisected things. Um, right, condensers look like a... I'm not sure what they look like. Um, temporary charged up when electric charges pass through them. When a condenser is charged up, hit it to power up your electro ball. Then hurl the energized electro ball at a chip. When you make contact, the chip lights up. Pa <laughs> what? <laughs> Pass an electric charge over the lighted chip and the chip becomes permanently activated. Hit charge is blocked at one end of a gate, which is... Uh, uh, in the manual, it's like a, a long thing, long rectangle with a squiggly line through it. To push them through it, resistors which are like uh, rectangles with gradations of... Oh yeah, they're the yellow and pink things, I think, that we can see here. Slow the charges down, accelerators, speed them up. Oh, they've got like a wavy yellow and pink design. Uh, short circuits, which is like a semicircle with a cross in the middle. We start the charge from the beginning. This is way too complex, isn't it? Should we watch what the other one does for a sec and see what happens? Yeah, I think I'm just going to watch what they do and see if I can work anything out. So they've kind of activated some of their... Hello. I can, I can bounce it out of the way, which is quite fun. Um, so they're doing things to my thing, which I don't... Oh, that was like a G-shaped thing. That was one of the symbols. But I don't, I don't quite get it. It's very hard to tell where you're aiming as well, which is kind of the thing with um, Xdas to a to a lesser extent, I think. Um, yeah, this is. I mean, as I was talking about um, earlier on in the stream, the <laughs> the design philosophy was very avant-garde for these these guys, so. Uh, I get it, but also I feel completely out of my depth. But you know what? I'm gonna step back a second and just admire the uh, the wonderful graphics on offer because yeah, so far everything screen, everything, every screen's been splendid. Um, wonderful. All right, yeah, I'm just going to let the bubble in the background and, and talk to you in chat for a sec. Uh, are you a big Sierra fan? Yeah, Mystery House. Yeah, I really enjoy playing Mystery House. It was, yeah, it was one of the first, wasn't it? Um, I'm, I'm a big Sierra fan too. I um, It may just be that I played them at the right age, but um, they, I've, I've had more enjoyment, I think, from Sierra games than uh, LucasArts ones, at least of the Sierra and LucasArts games that I've played. Um, yeah, and the, they're, they're kind of games that I um, hope to play more of 
um, for streams or videos as well. Yeah, Miss, I really enjoyed Mystery House and um, Wizard and the Princess was a bit more gruelling, um, but I, I did ultimately enjoy that. It was um, it was a good time. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, goodness me. I, so how? What are the win conditions for this uh, this brain brain melting game? Let's check. Scoring. Light up the six pins connecting your side to the centre of the brain before your opponent can light up all his pins and you win. You score you at the bottom right and your opponent scores at the bottom left. The clock is in the middle. Yeah, but what does the clock have to... Oh, is that just counting forever? When your opponent's condensers light up, steal his energy. Opening, <laughs> opening and closing switches keep each other from travelling towards the pins. How do you electro ball into his to deflect his aim? I think theoretically this game works, but I think you'd have to spend a lot of time just dis deciphering what what is possible. So there's kind there's kind of a three dimensional element. Um, although I sense me is just yay they won okay good that was I was kind of hoping something would happen um, because I think that would take a lot of practice just to work out what you're looking at. There's so much visual information there. Great. All done? I got 100. That's not a bad score, I don't think. Yeah, I um, I found Ecstas a bit more uh, a bit more intuitive than that. But then it, the game did come later, so that makes sense. Yeah, good good point. Good point about um LucasArts and Sierra. Um yeah, I think oh no, I started it again. How do I get out? <laughs> How do I get out of this game? Hold on, hold on, let me find the controls. Uh where is where is um Hang on, where's this page? Here it is. Quit the current competition, return to the podium screen. So she better press F9 or F10. Oh, oh, that was a disappointed kind of sound, wasn't it? Great. Okay, let's not play that again just yet. Yes, Lucas Arts and Sierra. Yeah. So I think I think I gel better with the um, oddly enough the design and sense of humour of Sierra uh, compared to Lucas Arts. Um, although I know I know Lucas Arts are a lot more lauded for their games. But I do really I remember really enjoying um, Loom, but that was kind of. I think that's the most se uh, serious of the LucasArts games I've played because they all tend to be quite, quite jokey, but in a in a kind of um, in joke kind of way. Um, and I guess Sierra is a bit more <laughs> rough and ready with its humour. Um, I certainly agree about their their series. They kept they kept the series going. Well, I mean, they pumped out so many games, didn't they? Really, but they kept their series going for a long time, and it kind of allowed them to develop. Um, developed them really interestingly. I think my um, the the best uh, sort of play experiences I had with Sierra were the Quest for Glory games. Um, really enjoyed those because they were kind of a, a light RPG um, along with the adventure game staple staple stuff um, and really atmospheric too. Uh, I thought um, I did really enjoy those. I think I played the first first four of those five games. Um, yeah, there's something I'd like to return to. Okay, well, I've com I've committed to I've committed to Purple Saturn Day, so let's have a look at the last of these events, which is called Time Jump. So we have to master time. We're going to jump into the future to make the jump, capture energy to fuel your gravity catapult, and explode through time. First, wind up the catapult. You can slow down the sparks by pressing rapidly while winding. Right. When the catapult is at rupture point, doesn't sound good, your spaceship wobbles and shakes, then the sparks start flying. Now fix your sight on the sparks and grab them. If your sight is directly on a spark when you make the grab, a box flows out to capture it. Well, naturally. Repeat the winding up and spark grabbing three times, then fasten your safety belt, wind up the catapult one more time, release and jump. So I can move the mouse and need to press the left button repeatedly or move the arrow keys and press the space bar repeatedly. 
So am I winding my catapult up by pressing the space bar or the button? Yes. Okay, well let's let's see what it looks like in motion and we'll go from there. I guess. Here we go. Oh nice. The um oh they're so good. The graphics for these are so good. I just kind of wish it was a bit more accessible, really. Right, so is this going to be sort of three-dimensional space in the same way that... Okay, okay, let's just... Oh, okay, so this is me pressing the space bar repeatedly. And space seems to be wiggling. Oh. Oh, now I need to move... What am I trying to get? The sparkles? Oh, okay, if I click on the sparkles. Is that good? Have I captured sparkles? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Um, okay, so I'm gonna condense space with my gravitational thingy, and then and then try and catch the sparkles. This is definitely the strangest thing I've done today. I've, am I am I am I collecting anything? Is this working? I think, are my numbers going up? I can't tell. Okay, now it's time to condense space again. Let's condense space. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Is this... Oh, hang on. Condensed space. Super massive black hole. Oh, okay. I think I travelled through time. Oh. Okay. Now what happens? Do I, am I waiting to see what the other person scores? Oh yeah. So it kind of runs it. We sort of take turns. And is that, is that like a hologram of me? Well, that was weird. Um, and I also didn't win that one. Okay, well, let's, let's go have a look at the other bits of this game. So um, that was just the practice mode. We had to, had a look at each one of the events. So um, what bit do I need to read from this manual? Um, yeah, let's just read so this section on why. Because that seems appropriate at this juncture. Purple Saturn Day games are held on the first day of every Saturn New Year. In competitors' terms, that's every 29.46 Earth years, 0.3 Clarkonian years, every day on Master Choc, and less time for the Corpo WW wins than it takes them to suit up. Eight forms of physically mobile life are invited to contend in the games. Competitors divide into four pairs. The two individuals of each pair compete against one another in four competitions. The winners of these quarterfinals go on to the semi-finals, and the winners of those go on to the final. The outright winner receives a swift face lock-on and leg entwinement from the Queen of Saturn. <laughs> right? A prize highly valued by all life forms for its universally euphorious sensation. Uh, okay, so you get a kiss and a cuddle from the Queen of Saturn. Okay, yep, sure. From the podium, from the podium, the first game screen, you can see the symbolic plaques for each of the four events, yes. But if we go to the bottom, that's where we can find uh, the kind of the main entran entrance uh, to the competition. So I'm going to turn to a section of the manual on the contenders. We'll have a look at this. This is, um, this is an interesting feature. So I think take a moment to load up here. Here we go. So we've got our contenders at the bottom. We're the human with, I don't know, possibly some kind of mohawk. Um, and these are all the other guys. Um, and we can have a look through their stats. Um, so 
the fact that there are numbers underneath has showed that we'd be compare, uh, com competing against, that's the word I was looking for, competing against this person first up. So uh, let's have a look at us. We've got stats. Um, let me uh, tab out to my uh, manual to refer to all these symbols again. Okay, so our stats. So on the the row, well, it's a column, isn't it? The column uh, just next to our portrait, under the triangle with the uh, circle and the, the Z thing in it. Uh, so from top to bottom, the categories are agility, so we've got 10, mental fluid, 10, aggression, 10, temporal flux, 10, size, 73, so I'm not sure what what units would that be, not sure, uh, eyesight, 68, and then it will have our scores for previous events. So let's check out the, the other person, if we can, uh, who is a Novtek Stvar. Novtek Stvar means prism head, prism head in the human speech. This contender is very hard-headed, but he lives so close by that he simply steps away from the office to contend. Notice his corporate dress, <laughs> right? Such a hormone-loaded dude often wins and gets his victory prize. Betty goes back to the office with a big spar on his crystal. Okay, that's very odd. Okay, so that's more of a range of stats, um, and I haven't previously competed in anything. So what I wonder, and, and don't know for certain, is is if these stats actually have any like gameplay significance, or whether they're just there for colour, because a lot of this here is, is kind of for world building. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for the world building, but um, I don't know if it kind of enhances the gameplay so you think this person like has really high uh, mental fluid and temporal flux so you might not go up against them in the the brain one or the the time one just because they might be better at that uh, size can't have anything to do with anything because it's kind of will operating through everything in a in like a little module so I don't know, um, but let's just have a little, I'll guide you through the other characters in this as well. So there's this, this person is a Shaxa apparently. The Shaxa used to have a planet, but their owner moved and dropped them off on a side galaxy on his way out of town. When not competing, Shaxa make great pals. They're quite friendly, like to have their ears scratched and can be counted on to treat newcomers to a warm, if somewhat unusual greeting. So I, I kind of like space space dogs maybe um so that's them uh and then what's the right picture for the next one no i know who that is uh i think it's the no oh this this guy is it no okay let me check my manual again so the illustrations don't quite match up here so that's uh so it's that one. Oh, this one? No. I'm going to have to check through and see who looks like the... Uh... Oh no, this is the one. Yeah, yeah. But in the manual, they cut off the complete the bottom bit with the big eyeballs, which uh, I'd say was a, a crucial feature, wouldn't you? Right. This is, These are the Golgos. Um, I could have just read the name on the screen, couldn't I? Early on in history, a forebear of the Golgos race stepped on a nail and didn't go to the doctor. Lockjaw set in and was passed on to the rest of the species. That's not how Lockjaw works. Golgos have never been known to speak or even smile, although they can whine in a mystical, menacing soprano. I think they had a lot of fun writing this game. Okay, so that's, that's the Golgos. And then... Uh, I think I can work the rest of them out from the illustrations. So this is the Kumos. Kumos leave most of their bodies on their home planet, Corpo WW, when they come to the Purple Saturn Day games. They regard the games as mental endeavours, steer with their trunks, and where... which part is the trunk? Uh, sure, steer with their trunks and wear gigantic earrings to keep the centre of gravity. 
bodies to the Kumo way of thinking are for work, not pleasure. Okay? Therefore, when a Kumo wins, his body doesn't get in the way of the thrill of victory. <gasps> Does a straw have one or two holes? Ooh. It, ooh. Now there's, that's going to keep me thinking for a while. I think, yeah, so is, is it, is it a, is it a, is it, yes, is a tube, is a tube just a hole? Oh, my goodness. Who can say? Uh, well, we know about humans, but let's read the entry in the manual because yeah, it's probably going to be strange. Humans communicate with guttural nasal speech. Quite astonishing since the nose is the least prominent organ, especially compared to some of the other combatants. Another unusual feature of the species is something like humans, the humans, something the humans call hair, a matting like material on their heads. Speculation has it that the purpose of hair is to get a nice tight fit for the space helmet. That's a good theory. Perhaps your other species might look into this. Okay. Sure, I went off on a hair tangent there. Okay, next up, uh, Swill. Who are the, these folks, I think? Okay. Um, it says, contrary to what some of you might think at first glance, Swill is among the friendliest, most agreeable of all contestants. Swill hails from the rare planet Swall, which orbits with a long, undulating motion. Two Swill, or even three Swill, will often accompany their participant. At the previous Purple Swatten Day, <laughs> got me doing it now, Purple Saturn Day, half a dozen or more Swill came along to cheer on their favourite. Oh, I see. Uh, what I'd failed to notice there is uh, you add an L for each Swill who comes along. That's interesting. So when it was all about one Swill, it was one L, and then two, and then three, and so on. Thank you, you caught me out there, Manuel. And then let's have a look at the Bulul. I wasn't expecting the tail there. Bulul hail from the only planetoid known that is 100% water. We're not participating in or training for the strenuous events of Purple Saturn Day. Bulul stay busy with their inventions. Among the better known Bulul contributions to intergalactic civilization are the Boyo Bed and tankless goldfish. Bizarre. One hole, two openings, you think? Yeah. I'd, I'd go along with that. It's all, it's all holes from where I'm sitting. Um, and then we've got the Krulis. Okay, let's have a look at the Krulis. Oh. Uh, the, the mouth looks even more aggressive on the, uh, the manual illustration. Um, so that's interesting. The Krulis have a long history of warfare. Starting with the same simian ancestors as Earth's humans, the Krulis evolved into fighting machines. From eons of holding automatic weapons, these warriors eventually ended up being born with armour and machine guns growing bodies. That's, that's not how evolution works. Krulis never show mercy, but you can get them to negotiate for a bag of peanuts and a banana. Okay, they were definitely were having a lot of fun with this. Um, I've just realised that the point is the same shape as uh, Exos's headdress as well. Ah, oh, the graphic design is is wonderful. The visual design is is super. Everything else is a bit weird. Um, let's see what happens if we try against one of these. See, most people would say a ring or a donut is one hole. Mmm. If you extend stretch the ring to achieve it's still one hole. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with that. Okay. Er, uh, right, so let's let's just do an experiment. Let's pick an opponent. Um I th I have a I feel like I have an affinity with the Kumo for whatever reason. So let's go with the Kumo. Um, what do we think they're not great at? Um, they're not very tall. <laughs> does that does that help? Um, what was what was one of the tolerable games I could play? Um, the first one actually was pretty good. Let's return to the first one. So let's take on a Kumo. 
Um, so how do I... Oh, I don't get to select who I'm up against, I have to play them. Okay, so they're not good at aggression. Don't know how that helps. Yeah, let's try the first event again. So, uh, how do I get out of the uh, this screen? How do I get out of this screen? Do I press that? Help me, game. How do you work? Okay. So select the triangle at the bottom of the podium screen to see the lineup of competitors. And select a life form in the lineup to consult his species ID file. When the file appears, you'll see his picture on the left. Next is a list of characteristics. Uh, on your right, you see the top scores. Select another contender. When you've seen all you want, select the triangle at the top center to close. Oh, this. Wow, <laughs> what's I supposed to know? That's my close button. It's all about when it comes to basketball and maybe football. But in a sport like soccer, shorter players can excel. Very true. Um, I'm confused in the case of Purple Saturn Day because um, none of the events uh, seem to involve you actually using your uh, your your um, your height uh, because you're sat in a spacecraft. I think in all of them. Okay, let's see for this one. Okay, let's give this one another go. I will uh, try my best and see what happens with uh, with one of these these sort of named com uh, competitors. Oh yeah, get a picture. Okay, so my score is on the right. I need to remember. And um, oh yeah, I remember how to accelerate. Oh, <laughs> this one goes so fast. It's um, it, it's a bit much. It's a bit much, frankly. Oh no, no. <laughs> yeah, so when I played uh, when I played this one earlier, if you um, I don't know if you caught it or not, but I uh, did bash into things qu quite a lot, quite a lot. Um, I, th I think I'm. I think I can remember which way to pass these by on, but it's just so many asteroids. So I can't move kind of up and I can only move left and right in space and then accelerate and decelerate, um, which is a little bit counterintuitive, I think, for me. Sound, that sounded like a good noise when I passed the yellow one. That sounded like a negative noise, I think. But it's it's hard to tell. The um apparently all the sounds are credited to um to Stefan Peek as well, the composer. Um which kind of kinda of makes sense. It seems to be uh Whoa, ah that was my opponent, okay. Um Yeah, Stefan Peek seems to be big on um his um his samples and uh a big have a big sample library to to create the soundscapes and music for for the games that he worked on. Um, Extas, uh, as the game I mentioned earlier, is a, is a really good example of that. It's kind of got a dynamic soundtrack. Ooh, ooh. Oh, you're right. Short, the shorter would be better in a spacecraft. Yeah, maybe it's um, maybe it's head clearance that is the uh, is the benefit there. Right, I've no, I'm, I'm scoring something, so that's good. It's making lots of the same sound. So, oh, that was a good one, I think. Okay. Oh, I felt like I was making progress there. No, no, no. <laughs> I 
no, no. Um, I've forgotten whether that's the good noise or the bad noise. Yeah. I still don't even know for sure. It's just my impression of them. The bonk noise is is pretty good as well, isn't it? No. Oh, come on. Uh, well, oh, 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 heck. Uh. Right, so from what I remember from last time, this game just kind of ends at some some point. <laughs> Uh, which I don't know if it's. It's because it the game's not timed, but I don't know how. I don't know what the point threshold is. I think. Oh, I think that's the finish line. Hooray! Thank goodness for that. I think that's the least torturous of the games, but. That's, um, that's not saying a lot. Well, congratulations. So I think it's a. Uh, I'm knocked out, and then the rest of them carry on. So I think you have to keep winning each event to, to get through. Yeah, four rounds, that would make sense. So, what happens now? Well, I guess, oh, I guess I got the chance to continue. I'd have to choose another event and play against the same person. I quite enjoyed the time one. Let's do a time one. Ah, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't knock me out of the tournament completely. I've just got to beat the first opponent um, to get three. So you think if if the opponents aren't randomised, then in theory this is the easiest opponent to compete against. I quite enjoyed the, um, the graphical effect of this one, so let's just give it a go. I'm hammering the space bar, you can probably hear it. Oh, okay, and then I need to click. Um, click, 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 click. Catch the sparkles, catch the sparkles. Come on, sparkles. Okay. Okay, ooh, is that good? Okay, sparkles, sparkles. It's kind of hard to, the, um, I'm not sure what the feedback is when you catch a sparkle or not. Am I catching the sparkles that come, some are going away from me and some are coming towards me, right? I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know. It's definitely an interesting aesthetic experience, if nothing else. Okay, I think I feel like this is pretty good. Okay. Well, I'm clicking, but not a lot seems to be happening. Oh, okay, here we go. Condense that space, and then something might happen. Might it? Could it? Whoa, oh. Okay, that was our big shoot into space. There you go. Oh, we went through the ring of lights. Did we go through the ring of lights last time? Do I do a thing now? Oh. oh, this is different. I mean, they got more points, obviously. Um, but the ending was different to what happened last time. So I don't know. I don't know what that meant compared to this one. So enigmatic. Okay, so we, we had to get all those. Um, I, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't feel brave enough to have another go at the other ones at the moment. Let's um. Let's have a look. What adverts and stuff did I miss from here?
There's... We had the practical recipe, didn't we? Ointmentus Meteoris. Goodbye, bumps and bruises. Here's how to make a soothing cream to chase those meteor shower blues. I think I need it after that, that race. Choose a plump star-conscious gluk, a variable unit of measurement formerly employed on rubber plantations, with a carefully selected exos feather. I didn't realise exos had feathers. Make an incision in the throat of a prepared migrax. Prepare him by buying him large quantities of gin in, in a low-life joint. Use the feather to spread a few drops of green migrax blood over the gluk. Next, soak the gluk in used engine oil. Bring to a boil. Pour into a bowl containing large numbers of writhing yucks. Rub the resulting ointment over your entire body. Now meteors, come make my day. Important, this cream is ineffective in the case of incandescent meteors. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's, um, so we can, I think we can press this red X here to withdraw for the competition. Then the rest of it plays out automatically. Um, and oh, you see who goes through to the next round. Cool. And then, oh, the winner's the, the screaming one. That's fun. Okay, so I think we get to see them receive their prize. I think that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's the Queen of Saturn, of course. Wearing an Exos hat. Fab. <laughs> Well, that's very strange. Right. Okay. What do I press now? Any any key? Press the any key. Yeah, I guess so. And it loads back up again. <laughs> All right. Well, I feel like we've seen most of this game. To be honest, I don't think it's got many more secrets to to hide. Um, let me pick up a few couple of bits of uh... I mean I guess there might be um, something different might happen if you win a round but I've got a feeling that you probably not the case um, I'll read a couple there's a couple more little uh, box to text to read um, and then I think I'll just change to a different game for the last little bit of the stream okay so this is ask him Here's a wonderfully soothing mind massage technique called Ask Him. Him knows everything. With him, everything becomes clear. Why we're here, what happens afterwards, the truth about flying saucers, and so forth. First, stop reading. Now count to 100 in a loud, clear, positive voice. One, two, three, four. You should be ready now. Your mind empty of all material desires and intruding thought modules. Breathe. Kill those lights. Now I'm going to count to three. When I say three, you stare relaxedly at a nice picture. Ready? Here I go. One, two, two and thirteen seventeenths. Three, stare. There, I told you it would work. Now you feel happy, in control of your corporeal body. Your astral eyes keep reading as your physical eyes stare at the magic picture. You feel so wonderful now. The doors of your inner mind open to receive the thrilling secret. I am him. You come to with a start. Sweat spurts from many of your pores. That's a uh, disturbing description. You breathe in a manner known to doctors as hmm. And yet you are convinced nothing has happened. Or has it? Don't ask me. Ask him. Okay, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay, last one. A good one for intergalactic vertigo. The sickening vacuum of deep space, we've all suffered from it, haven't we? It's awful enough just remembering those timeless moments of intergalactic horror when your mind wanders off into forbidden and useless metaphysical speculations when you can't resist the temptation to light up a trump tail. Oh, that's what I might have been smoking earlier. This recipe is for your... It's for you. Mince together some used chewing gum, mouldy sock powder nasal scrapings and garlic, and mix into a pound of ground computer discs. Add bat droppings, chilli powder and a zest of concentrated body dampness. Knead mixture until it is an oozing yellow dough. Divide into reptile-sized balls. Dip into thoroughly 
What's a, what's a reptile size? Reptiles can be any size. Dipping a thoroughly beaten toad spawn and fry slowly in deep smoking bug juice. Serve with savoury rat and decomposed vegetable sauce. You've forgotten all about total vacuum and space fatigue, haven't you? How about another sick ball? Look at this one, just dying to be gobbled up. It's winking at you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. What a game, eh? I think I probably enjoyed the manual more than the game. But, that said, it's a distinct aesthetic experience, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah. That's Purple Saturday, folks. Hello, here are some errata and appendices for this stream. We were playing the European version of the game. There are yellow bars on the right edge of the screen. Uh, normally they would not be there, that was a graphical error. I also want to mention that the game is currently available to buy from digital storefronts, but only in the DOS version, which, as I understand it, is inferior in graphics and sound to, say, the Amiga version, or I believe the Amstrad or Atari versions that were also released. There are a couple of things uh, subsequent to playing that I had sort of missed out at the time. So one thing to note is that in competition mode, you do need to play your opponent at all four games to progress to the next round. I'm not sure how the scoring works there, because you could theoretically draw two and two uh, matches or something, so I'm, I'm not sure how that was exactly. Um, and after completion of the first day's competition, this is just a weird extra detail, uh, the game moves to day two, the same events are available again, uh, to, and you're competing against the same group of people. But this time, when the competition progresses to the end of ceremony with the Queen of Saturn, a child of the species of the previous day's winner is present on the stage, uh, which frankly poses more questions than it answers. Okay, that about wraps it up. I'm going to pop some end cards on the screen now. Uh, one will take you to a, um, a rather thorough and successful long play of the game, uh, for Amiga again, by Mr. Computer, so you can go and have a look at how it works when it works there. And here, the second part of the stream in which we played this or computer people. You can also subscribe if you want to for more of this, and I also have a Patreon. Bye!